Alrighty, I'm in Elmira, New York, folks, at the Chemung County Historical Society Museum. I'm just walking out after touring the museum, seeing the Civil War prison exhibit. Chemung uh, Valley Historical Society here. If you come into Elmira, now this site right here is where we're standing. We're going to talk a little bit about a man named John Surratt. A familiar name might come to you as uh, Mary Surratt was his mother, who was the first woman ever executed by the United States government. So here's the Chemung Valley History Museum. This vacant lot here, now it's a parking lot. Now at that time, this, in 1865, April 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, in that area there, John Surratt, was here in Elmira, New York. And he came to a place here called Stewart and Ufford's Men's Furnishings, which is basically a clothing shop, hats, different things for men. And two or three of the men who were here working at the time testified when John Surratt came back to the United States in his trial about being part of the Lincoln conspiracy and the Lincoln assassination that they had indeed seen John Surratt that day the 14th Friday in their establishment right here. So we're gonna walk a little farther up here. Within a couple of blocks here, folks, we're gonna pinpoint a few spots where John Surratt was seen by numerous people during that week prior to and during the day of the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln on April 14, 1865. So that vacant lot over there, parking lot, Stuart and Ufford's Men's Furnishings. So we're going to take a walk down here. The Chemung River is right over there. The other side. We're going to walk down the street here, and I'm going to get to a couple of more sites relating to the Lincoln Conspiracy and John Surratt's involvement or not involvement of it of his murder on April 14th, so. Now John Surratt was born in 1844. He just turned 21 years old, actually, the week of that assassination. And um, he was friends with a main famous actor during the time period named John Wilkes Booth. They met numerous times at the Surratt boarding house in Washington, D.C. John and John Wilkes Booth were friends. They had many meetings together, and John Surratt was part of the conspiracy to kidnap Abraham Lincoln and to ransom him for Confederate prisoners who were held in prison camps, one of which is in Elmar, New York, down the street down there. The site of it is. Now I'm standing on the corner now of Baldwin and Water Street. I'm going to cross over to the riverside. And I'm going to show you a couple of sites here. Now obviously the buildings are gone now. But the building right there is now the Chemung Canal Trust Company. Was the site of the Rathbun Brainerd House. Basically, it was called the Brainerd House. It was a hotel, and it went across the front part here, and then it went down Baldwin Street. As we stand here, you'll notice Baldwin Street isn't exactly straight from where we're standing. It kind of angles off to the left. So the hotel's side went down where those cars are there, down to the next block, right where that blue sign is, you can see. And then it went, the front part went here where the front of the Chemung Canal Trust Bank is now. Now, John Surratt signed into this bank under the name of John Harrison. His middle name was Harrison. And there was a store on this corner, owned by another man in Elmira. It was another men's furnishing store by the name of John Cass. And John Cass remembered seeing uh, John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> his friend John Surratt here on April 15th Saturday same day that Lincoln had died 
And he made a comment about reading it that Lincoln had died, and he wasn't impressed with the reaction he received from John Surratt. But he didn't remember him seeing him there that day. Now, inside the Raspin Hotel here, the Raynard House, there was a telegraph office. So John Cass could go from his store here over to the telegraph office, and he received news that Abraham Lincoln had indeed died. He went back across the street here, and he told all of his workers to go home for the day. So we have the Brainerd House here, where John Surratt stayed. We have John Cass's establishment here, the men's shop. And then down the street, down at that next light down, to the left, where the yellow fire hydrant is down there, is where Stewart and Upward's men's furnishings store was located. And all these people testified in open court that they had seen John Surratt at these places on the day before, the day of, and the day after Lincoln being shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. So not only is Elmira known for many things, including this guy over here, Mark Twain, who was, by the way was a Confederate soldier from Missouri. He didn't like it too much. He was a young guy at the time. Soldiered for a while, then he basically deserted. Then, like I said earlier, up the street here, a few blocks, bordering the Shemung River, was the site of the Elmira prison camp, nicknamed by the prisoners Elmira. And then we have this piece of history here involving John Surratt and Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Whether John Surratt was part of the assassination to kill him, whether he was in Washington, D.C. on the day of the assassination. Why was he in Elmira, New York, though? Where was he going? Well, Surratt was a Confederate Secret Service, headquartered out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So he wasn't a soldier, but he did work for the Confederacy, and he was sent by General Lee... <laughs> not that General Lee, not General Robert E. Lee, it was Robert E. Lee's cousin, Edward Lee, sent to go to Canada, to go to Montreal. And on the way there, he was going to stop here in Elmira to seek the prison camp, to see what kind of guards were there, what kind of fences were around it, what kind of uh, protection there was around it. Because they were going to hopefully have a prison break when they kidnapped the president. So from here, he proceeded to go to farther west in New York, to a place in New York up near the Finger Lakes called Canandaigua, where there were numerous witnesses on the 16th and the 17th who saw him there as well. So Surratt then went up to Lake Ontario and crossed over to Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So John Surratt may have been part of the conspiracy to um, kidnap and ransom Abraham Lincoln, but he was not part of the conspiracy that day to kill either Lincoln or Vice President Johnson or Secretary of State William Seward. He wasn't even in Washington, D.C. on that day. From Montreal, Quebec, he left and he went to Europe. He went to Rome. He became part of the Papal Guard for the Pope. Eventually, he made his way to Egypt where in 1866, 16 to 18 months after the assassination, uh, John Harrison Surratt was returned to the United States where he went on trial for his involvement in the Lincoln conspiracy, where he was found not guilty, all the charges were dropped, and a lot of the reason he was con not convicted was because of the testimony of the people here who had seen him here in Elmira, New York, on the day of April 13, 14, and 15 on 1865. So once a little gets a little warmer out here, I'm going to do a more in-depth uh, couple of videos on John Surratt and what his involvement wasn't <laughs> in the murder of Lincoln. When it's a little warmer, we're going to do a little more detailed. We're going to try and get up on the roof of the Shimon Canal Bank, of course, with their permission. And we're going to take a look at the city of Elmira from a bird's eye view and get some of the sites in the area that are relating to not only the Lincoln assassination, but also the Civil War in uh, central, south central New York, Elmira. 
So there'll be other videos coming here in a month or so once it warms up here. We'll see. And I'll be adding more to it, more photographs. So from Elmira, New York, at the site of the former Brainerd House and the corners of Baldwin and East Water Street, this is Scott J. Payne, the Living Historian, signing off.